podcast. I am your host, Norma Sanzu. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Love is in bloom, a muddy pride, a sticky groom. Wow. Good poem. They should have won a pulse or something. What did they call for writing something? Wait, a pulse? I don't know. Pulse, that... or, you know, the writing thing where people get awards for writing. Honestly, I, the way I delivered it, I think you should check for a pulse. <laughs> He's flatlining. Uh, but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 3, The Mod Couple. So, in this episode, Pinkie Pie's super best friend sister bond with Mod is challenged when Mod gets a boyfriend that Pinkie can't stand. So, let's go for first impressions. How do you like this episode, Silver? Eh, not all that much. How to describe... It features a lot of golden moments for Maud and for Starlight and for, above all, Limestone, with a little bit for Marble. Mm -hmm. But Pinky throughout it all, this is reflective of something I noticed for the first half of Season 8. The main six are not as enjoyable as they usually are, mostly because they're the ones being put in the role of the antagonist. They're still the more proactive protagonist, but they're going about everything in a very negative way. And so it's it's a little frustrating to watch. And my empathy, even though I thought Pinky was behaving poorly, my empathy did not go out to Mudbriar, who also did not did not uh, put forth his best. Mudbriar is questionable at best. So we'll we'll get into the nitty gritty on all that. Mm-hmm. And I like this episode not as much as the others, but this one was quite a interesting episode. We got to see. Mod having a boyfriend, yay, and the boyfriend's personality is yay, like her. And we get to see Pinky being jealous for once. And yeah, there's a lot of cool things in this episode that's kind of okay. And, well, um, let's hit into the review. If you guys at home have not watched this, pause here and go ahead and catch the episode. Welcome back. So, how do you guys like the episode? So anyway, uh, we're going to jump into the review. Um, Beforehand, I'm just going to let you guys know that my throat is not feeling too well. So if you hear awkward pauses, that means I was coughing and trying to recover or trying to speak normally. Yes. So anywho, let's get into it. So we start off the episode with a comedy act. Yay. Open mic night. I wonder how much booze they can sell at this place. That is... Give me the triple X apple cider. Uh, now you wonder if Applejack's selling those. Are you kidding? Uh, Applejack would probably uh, say, just hook it up to my vein, y'all. <laughs> Ma's on stage. <laughs> oh, God, no. See, but talking about on stage, yes, it's stand up comedy night, open mic night, as Silver just mentioned. And we get to see the comedy acts of Mod Pie. And wow. Um, her act is pretty. Um, how would I even want to put this? They're pretty stale. It, or it builds tension just by making everyone uncomfortable with this monotone. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the final act is when Pinky says, my sister's funny. <laughs> You're right. But anywho, after the club, our two sisters go out and Pinky wants to celebrate with something, stickers and whatnot. And talking about doing what and planning to do something for the next day and whatnot. You know, Pinky being Pinky. And Mod says, nah, she's busy and whatnot. And she'll probably try to do an early morning meeting or something like that. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. And then she, uh, I love the transition they do before between Pinky bouncing around so excited for sister time. And then just like that hard cut to the Mod's beautiful uh, home locale. And she's just bouncing in. Whee! Yep. Uh, that cut was nice. Like, that was a magnificent cut. Like, film editors, pay attention to that. Like, that was amazing. So, why don't you take over for a bit? Like, I, I kind of need to rest for a bit. Alrighty. Maud is nowhere to be found, and Pinky, being Pinky, dials her reaction up to 20. Because her her marvelous Maud is missing. Mon dieu. Oh no. And so, she begins the hunt, which is, of course... T- breaking the bounds of time and space to find anything, 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 anywhere. 
And so she's on the hunt. She's spying on everybody. And for some reason, she thinks Maude would go to Yak Yakistan. So we get to see the yaks. Yay. Whoop de flippin' do. <laughs> so one seems salty about the yaks. I've never been able to get behind the yaks except for... Uh, Yona? Y- Yona Yak, yes. Because she... You can see her eyes. I've come to realize... It's the, you gotta see the whites of their eyes. <laughs> but we do get a cameo from Derpy, so yay. Yes, we get a cameo from Derpy to find out that, that Pinky has touched her perhaps inappropriately <laughs> as she puts up uh, wanted posters. Although maybe it's just the soccer mom sensor saying, no, we don't want you to look at this pony. Behold not her bubbles. <laughs> oh no, bubbles. I also appreciate that we get a different view of Ponyville than I'm used to seeing. We're tracing a mountain path. Oh yeah, that's new. Yeah, it's a very different, uh, very different look for a classic Ponyville. Oh, this could be from the view from uh, Twilight's Castle. Yes, just look down at all those miserable little peons. <laughs> it's not like that. Oh, you know it is. You know, secretly, she's like, I could launch a fireball right now and not a one of you could stop me. Oh, no. Because I'm the princess of friendship. Oh. Is Natch? <laughs> moving on, moving on. Moving on, so Starlight Glimmer, we get more of Starlight Glimmy Glam, although because of what we'll learn later about her old room, I'm like, there's still a guitar in the closet, isn't there? <laughs> Go on and admit it. She doesn't have a closet. Well, then get one. Where are you going to store all the fashion rarity throws at you? That is true. Well, probably she'll get a closet one day, and she can pop out of it to surprise Pinky, you know? And that will be a glorious day when you can startle Pinkie Pie. <laughs> yeah. So let's see here. But she starts making demands of Starlight Glimmer. Yep, she th- now she's making it act like Starlight might have hidden Maud away. Oh, the former fiend, the now friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Pinky's logic here is, where are you hiding Maud? You're hiding Maud. Tell me. And poor Starlight here just probably had her morning coffee, just reading a book. And Pinky's barging in, messing up her room that she tidied up. Yeah, great, great job. But in a nice change from their last conversation, rather than uh, Starlight being very blunt and and Pinky being upset, Starlight actually agrees to be helpful. She says, you go get the supplies for Maud's surprise birthday party and I'll look for Maud proper, which probably means being less destructive. Mm-hmm. And we visit a new location. And I have so many questions for this, but do introduce the new location, please, Silver. Well, this is apparently a bakery supply shop, i.e. they sell the stuff to make baking goods, but they don't actually bake them there. Mm -hmm. So these ponies should probably be on a first name basis with Pinky. But instead, the the store, well, the pony at the counter, don't even know if it's the owner, she, mm, she doesn't get much of a speaking role because there's a lanky stallion just standing there. Five minutes before lunchtime. Two, actually. But take a look at his main cut. He's Stygian. He's Stygian. Well, his personality can be an abyss, so... <laughs> uh, but still, uh, when I first saw this pony, I find him annoying. Well, I think a lot of people... His first <clears throat> introduction is to annoy Pinky, which, given that we're... A lot of folks are Pinky fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not great to get on the bad side of the main six, especially when he's unapologetic for taking forever just to set a, what was it, thank you or goodbye? Uh, no, it's not thank you or goodbye. It's see you later or goodbye, which both of them have different meaning. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing to say farewell. Oh, please. But let's also be fair as fair. Pinky came by two minutes before lunch break. Uh, partly because she wasted time looking for Maud. So, mm, Pinky's not exactly innocent in this. And her frustration is based more on eagerness to please Maud rather than living in the moment and talking with the pony in front of her. True, true. But uh, at the same time, too, um, if the pony clerk were um, on a first-name basis with Pinky, she'll probably want to talk to her for a bit, you know? But it seems that, nope, I'm not getting any overtime for this. I'm going to take my break. There's an argument to be made that people need to defend their breaks with great zeal and gusto. So, uh, I can't can't fault her for enforcing 
what may even be government mandated lunch. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> By order of Princess Celestia, you must all take an hour for lunch. <laughs> Any deviancy will result in jail time. Oh, no. By Princess Twilight, who is still looking to throw a fireball at you from atop her castle. <laughs> but in all honesty, she could take the break and take the order for Pinky and just say, um, come back after lunch and we'll get your orders. Mm, but then you're giving the customer special treatment. And boy, do I know, I know from experience, people love to take advantage of that. And it's one of those cases where you're the baking supply shop. Pinkie Pie works at Sugar Cube Corner, a bakery. It seems like you want to be chummies with those kind of stores, you know what I mean? Chummies, but not subservient. True, true. Oh, she's not getting overtime. So, yay. So, yay. So, again, you know, I'm just, I'm still picturing Twilight trying to get that fireball going. That's my image for the day. Twilight Sparkle wants to burn your house down. Oh, no. Uh, Evacuate the books. She might spare you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, eh, eh. But, anywho... I think the I think the moment uh, Mudbriar really loses people is when he rudely declares, "I won't apologize for proper etiquette," and a pinky pie says, "Not apology, not accepted." <laughs> yeah, uh, that character trait is just not awesome. I see. He says, "I I will not apologize for speaking with precision," but can you? Would you apologize for taking so long to decide? No, because he's talking with precision. And that is the key to anything. Blah, blah, blah. This guy infuriates me at points. Well, it's about to get worse. As Pinky finally does find Maud. Maud is right there and she's happy to see Pinky. At least Maud happy, which is indistinguishable. But she finally comes clean with the Pinkster. She has a boyfriend and therefore all the shippers in the dance go, eee! Oh, wait, it's a, it's a cannon show. We can't do much with it. Oh, eee! the gasp. A boyfriend, and this ch- heaven above, <laughs> yeah, and this changes the status quo a little bit for the show in my eyes because the show is not afraid to introduce a boyfriend or a uh, love interest for one of the characters. As in this case, it's Maud, so it doesn't really impact that much for the show. But just imagine what happens later on when one of the main six gets a boyfriend or whatever. Ain't gonna happen. Totally, totally. I don't think anyone would... Uh, how can I describe? I don't think anyone would uh, take that risk of introducing a boyfriend. Oh, heavens. Or a girlfriend. Yeah. Or a girlfriend. Well, oh, a girlfriend. That'd be even... That'd be very bold. True. But not bold. A bold statement by My Little Pony. True, true. But other show has done it. So, yeah. Uh, but hey, you're talking about boyfriends. Maud, boyfriend revealed to be a rock. You know, given Maud's tendencies, I wouldn't put that past her. Well. Oh, Boulder, only you can speak my language. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, but it seems now, no. It's, it's, in, it's not a rock. It's behind the rock. And we are introduced to Mudbriar. Yes. Technically, not anymore. <laughs> oh, gosh. And it's the same pony at the uh, baking baking store. So yay! I find it funny when I first saw it. Like, ha ha! The pony that you couldn't get along with Pinkie Pie is the boyfriend. Like, ah, karma ain't that a what you gonna call this biznatch? As you mentioned, it's silver. Oh yeah, it's a biznatch. Although technically, Pinky didn't do any, well. Okay, Pinky did some wrong in searching for Maud and freaking everybody out. But honestly, if you can't accept Pinky for that right now, you're never gonna. If you don't like Pinky by now, <laughs> if you don't like her. Yeah, but at the same time, too, um, where is, is this guy new to Ponyville or whatever it is? Because where's that intro or where's that Welcome to Ponyville song that Pinkie Pie likes to sing all the time? Well, maybe he slipped in under the radar. <laughs> He is so monotone like Maud that uh, perhaps he he can avoid her pinky sense. Oh my gosh, he's her venom. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so we're introduced to Matt Briar again. And the biggest the biggest question here is, where did these two meet? And oh my goodness, the story of those two meeting is a funny one. Not really. Funny weird, not funny. Haha. Uh-huh. True, true. Uh, they met at a rock 
show. You would think it. Rock on. <laughs> you would think that it will involve guitars, drums, bass, and probably scantily clad ponies, but no, it is a literal rock show with stones and stuff. And it turns out my Briar himself was kind of stoned. I am so high right now. <laughs> Nobody can tell the difference. Uh, but sure enough, um, Pinkie Pie wants to accept Matt Briar and introduce the whole plan to throw Mott a birthday party. And we get to learn a bit more about Matt Briar. And it seems that he... Hmm, how do I put this? Matt Briar has the same personality type as Mod, except that we don't like Matt Briar. And why is that, Silver? Well, f for two reasons. First off, he is directly antagonizing Pinky. Or perhaps, mm, he's not intentionally doing it, but his very personality antagonizes her. And as we have grown used to Pinky, uh, this sudden conflict with one of the characters we like is a problem. In all honesty, I don't really think that's it. Um, in my opinion, I think it's the way he speaks. Well, there's... Also, the fact that he's not really uh, working to meet Pinky halfway. He just, again, like you say, he just keeps going. Well, technically, well, technically, it's clear that being right or technically right, the best kind of right, Ooh. is more important to him than social communication. Yeah, and that's something where in this day and age, you you can't be that way. you you got to flex. Well... This is, that this leads to an interesting uh, topic. I saw this episode at BabsCon 2018. And so uh, while I was there, I was talking with a fellow fan. And he said, you know, I have Asperger's. And I see a lot of myself in uh, Mudbriar and how I communicate. I It's hard to pick up on those social cues. Like when Pinky is trying to say, I'm Pinkie Pie. What's your end? You know, she's trying to get a hello out of him. Mm -hmm. And he's just not picking up what she's throwing down. That's interesting. So I hesitate to diagnose the characters. Mostly because, one, I'm not a psychologist. I And I don't know enough about them. But if people feel they can express themselves to the character, say, yeah, this is what it's like for me. This is, I don't mean to be difficult or or focus too much on technicalities. It's just how things work. But unfortunately, Mudbriar is being presented in a very unsympathetic light. And so he's not. it's hard for other members of the audience to really grasp onto that. I, we, need to be, we need to have this explained to us to better understand. Hmm. You know, if he was quote-unquote special, this episode would have been seen in a different light. At the same time, if you diagnose, that means that the, that uh, a person has to be explained or uh, excused. And in a show that's really about friendship with variety, maybe you, don't, maybe you want to leave that ambiguous so people can identify with it, not identify with it as... Uh, applies to each individual within said audience. Mm -hmm. I understand. It's literally the origins of the show with the main six. Like, oh, I uh, relate so much with Fluttershy. Oh, I relate so much to Rainbow Dash and so on. And yeah, as the show goes on, characters change and we are introduced to more. And I'm a bit surprised that someone could relate to Mudbriar here. I think recognizing the sometimes the social difficulty... Not necessarily the speech pattern choice or insistence on technicalities. I think that's very unique to Mudbriar. Mm, true that, true that. But uh, that's another topic for another day. So let's move on to the next one. Or the next scene where Pinkie Pie vents her feelings to Starlight. And, yeah. Oh, to Glimmy Glam. Sorry, Glimmy. Yes, Glim Glam. Glam Shim Sham, which means that, hey, again, the last time these two really had a conversation, uh, Starlight just sort of bluntly said, you're getting in the way. <laughs> Pinky got sad and she left. It's like, you know, Starlight wasn't wrong. But she was very blunt. Blunt. And uh, much like Applejack and Sugarcoat, sugar mm. there's a difference between honesty and bluntness. Yep. 
and and it's fitting really because Starlight Glimmer here is quote unquote the um what you call this counselor. All of a sudden now, all I'm picturing is her in a Star Trek uniform, Counselor Starlight. <laughs> that happen why did that happen in the first place because i have a very strange mind oh goodness but anywho but more than sorry. more than that i just sort of marvel hmm who's her riker <laughs> first officer trixie yeah probably first officer trixie yeah why not yay uh trixie gives the bad advice Ba, da, na, 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 na. Uh, I am going on about Star Trek and ponies. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, anywho, uh, Pinky vents her feelings about Mud Briar to Starlight, and Starlight points out everything that Pinky's pointing out does seem to relate to Mod, and those two seem like the perfect couple. And this is one thing I take issue with. Partly, I'm a fan of opposites attract. If Maud has a boyfriend and it's just presented as a as a male version of her, it's less fun. I think people like Maud for her uniqueness. To introduce a character who is cut from a similar cloth, it feels less special now. So I can see why people would resent Mudbriar for basically horning in on Maud's shtick. Mm, true, true. And yeah, I do understand that idea where... Um, a character having a unique kind of personality is special to the show. And if somebody has the same thing, yeah, ain't not going to be special anymore. And for the opposite of the track idea, that is something really interesting. If Mod would have a boyfriend or a girlfriend who has the opposite personality as her, that would be very interesting. But wouldn't that be Pinkie Pie 2.0? It doesn't have to be the extremes. Maybe he's a passionate artist and he can sense Maud's passion, even if it's not apparent to others. The flames of her of her love for rocks move me so. Mm, all right. Makes sense. But you work with the boyfriend you have. No? <laughs> oh, yeah. To, uh, to quote uh, Prometheus, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. <laughs> Although I quoted Prometheus, which is not a great movie to begin with. Wait, are you talking about the Prometheus the other a scholar or Prometheus the movie? The movie. What? Really? It said that? Yep. Uh, by the captain of the ship as he's about to, you know, have a one night stand while his crew is lost in the caves because these people are were idiots. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, thought, I, I thought you were talking about the philosopher. All right then. <laughs> no, he, I'm pretty sure he'd be a little bit more civil than, uh, than just saying, yeah, love the one you're with. Hmm. Oh, well. But anywho, Starlight Glimmer comes up with a plan uh, or just points out that, hey, Pinky, why don't you and Mod Briar plan for Mod's birthday party while I'll keep Mod busy? Sounds like a plan? Let's do this. Yes, let's do this. And so we, we get probably the best Mud, Mud Briar scenes, mostly because now he's having to react to Pinky's extremes, which means, one, he does get scared when, he, when a trap door opens beneath him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He is flustered when Pinkie Pie reclines on his back. <laughs> Suddenly for a minute, I'm understanding why people wouldn't like Pinkie Pie. It's like, hey, personal space and please stop throwing me through walls and floors. Yeah. And in, and Mod Briar is introduced to the Pinkie Cave. Dun, dun, dun. Or in this case, a cavern. You're spoiling the moment, Mod Briar. But also we learn stick abuse. Oh no. He doesn't like stick Dicks being abused or being hit. Like, oh no. Oh, she learned that when uh, Pinky introduced pinatas, but now she pulls out another pinata and Mud Briar actually looks horrified. <laughs> oh no. It's like, it's a rock and stick abuse. You hate us both. <laughs> Why do you want to kill us? Oh no. But um, Pinkie Pie comes up with a plan um, with edible rock plates, um, color ice cubes, and whatnot. And Mudbrayer here says, like, I have a plan. Let me check it in my mind scope or something like that. It's almost like Iron Man's thing, but not really. Oh, you mean Sherlock? Oh, Sherlock does that? Who was also played... Yes, this was from Sherlock, the series, not to be confused with Robert Downey Jr. Jr.'s uh, Sherlock movie. Oh, you're talking about Cam uh, Doctor Strange, then? 
Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, yes. Yep. The Mind Castle is from his his Sherlock. Ah, all righty then. And it's quite delightful. This is probably the funnest moment for Mudbriar because it's him being a little eccentric himself. Oh, true, true. And we get behind that. Yes. And, Can I get a witness? And he says that none of those things that you mentioned, Pinkie Pie, Mort is interested in. She does not like the surprise party. And states that she's just liking them because you like them. And doesn't want to hurt your feelings. Oof. That is rough. Yeah. Again, there's there's bluntness. Like Applejack says, honesty is the best policy. Yeehaw. Honesty, but honesty with care for another. That's, well, okay, bluntness is base in my eyes. It's a uh, shutdown of conversation. You're basically just saying, well, this is what I want. This is all about me. Uh, and that kind of conversation leads you to nowhere. Indeed. Yep. So, uh, but, yep, the gauntlet is now thrown. Who knows Maud better? Mm-hmm. Maud's boyfriend or Maud's sister who has been living with her for many years. Which does bring up a point when we get to the next scene. But let's go to the next scene. Uh, we get to see um, Maud Briar and Pinkie Pie approaching Starlight and Maud flying the kites. Yay, kite flying. It's been a while. Starlight gets to do what she likes. Um, now I'm envisioning Starlight Poppins. Up to the highest heights. <laughs> oh, oh, now you're making me think of Yandu. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, um, the question is thrown at Maud. Do you like surprise parties? And Maud's answer here is, I like surprise parties because you like surprise parties. I'm like, what? So, all this time, Pinky's been living in a lie? Oh no! But more than that, this is the same answer pretty much Rainbow Dash gave when uh, Pinkie Pie learned she doesn't like pies. Mm -hmm, sure that. And I just like, so where's the outrage and anger at, at Maud? A, eh? A. Eh? Well, double standard much? She is kind of um, throwing down her anger and stuff and blaming it all on Mudbriar. And yeah, in this situation here, Pinkie Pie is blaming it all on Mudbriar, saying that you've been brain controlled by him and his, uh, he's controlling you and whatnot, blah, 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 and saying stuff. Oh, no, he's changing you. Oh, run away. Well, she runs away and then is tormented again by Pinkie Pie dials everything to 11. Ergo, she is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Cuckoo <laughs> for Cocoa Puffs. Yep. And this scene is just funny to me. I, I just like it because... Oh, I'm not shy at all, and I hate animals. Fashion? Not for me, darling. <laughs> An apple a day is not right disgusting. Slow and steady wins the race. And I never read a book. <laughs> oh, oh, I never learned to read. <laughs> and then there's Fluttershy. I'm not shy, and I hate animals. Oh, did Discord get at her again? <laughs> nah, man. Like, the inner monologue is just funny. And looking at the drawing for this one is just too cute. It's a different style, and I like it. And then, of course, Pinky running away screaming. It's wonderful. <laughs> yep. And she wakes up at the pie farm, which is way beyond the borders. Or, well, let's just say that she has to take a train. And yeah. Well, the other ponies have to take a train. Pinky, I could seriously see her sprinting the way. Oh, yeah, true that. She's got that kind of mad skillage. True that, true that. But anyway, um, she's happy but remembers that Maud hates parties. So, yeah, she's sad now. And Limestone, don't give a crap. You, you're, you're here, you have to work. So, yeah, she has to work on the rock farm. And, yeah, she has a conversation with uh, Marble. And, yeah, she, she vents her feelings and Marvel gives Limestone this stare and, yeah. They have to go and break. The stinky eye. Yep. I, I like this. This is, this is a level of communication only experience between sisters. <laughs> yep. And goodness me, Limestone, the most aggressive, is actually the more sympathetic because she goes with that whole, I'm not jealous. <laughs> Who said anything about being jealous? <laughs> yeah, but she is kind of quote unquote jealous and whatnot. Like, what? What has a boyfriend? Well, I'm not jealous. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Brooklyn Rage. Uh, but anywho, 
um, after their conversation, um, Marble gives the look, and yeah, they're going to do some metaphor training, which totally goes over Pinky's head, like Drax. It, it would never go over my head. My <laughs> reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. I, I like Drax. Drax is funny. <sighs> but still. <clears throat> but uh, I, I did love that <laughs> they almost they almost incited Pinkie Pie to murder. So you're saying I should crack his skull open. Good idea. Yay. La, 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 la. <laughs> oh, wow. Some fan video out there would make it. Oof. No, 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 no. It's just a metaphor, Pinky. It's just a metaphor. And my set metaphor is, look at this rock. It has a beautiful, it's a geode. It has beautiful crystals inside. The outside looks horrible, but the inside is marvelous. And as for Mud Briar, he is completely useless outside from what we can see. But he makes Mud happy, and that's what counts the most. And with that understanding, Pinky has to, well, give the olive branch and say sorry. Except that technically, it's not an olive branch. Which, all right, you know, that that's where, again, Mudbriar, his personality is meant to test Pinky, but also test the audience. Mm -hmm. And yet, thank, thankfully, he comes back a little by saying, oh, and I love that that genus. Yeah. And yeah, and, and with that, I think from this point on, like, we could, how to put this? To me, from this point on, our journey of accepting or liking Mott Briar here is the same step that we're taking with Pinky. Because I think the lesson here is we're learning it at the same time with Pinky. You agree? Mm, learning it with Pinky, I, as an older member of the audience, I don't know if I learned with Pinky. I, I was more fascinated if someone did use Mud Briar to explain how the world looks from a different perspective, including someone with Asperger's. That would be very educational, beneficial. I think this show is something more when people can use it as an example to communicate an idea, not necessarily just hmm, how to describe. It's less about, is this character literally this way, or can I use this character as a, as a means to express myself? Hey, there you go. All right. But in all honesty, when uh, Mud Briar here says that he loves the branch and is ex uh, and accepts Pinky's help for the party planning, I kind of change my feelings toward him. Yeah, he becomes a little bit nicer, but that's because he's now he's meeting Pinky halfway, and that's what we've been looking for throughout this episode. Just don't have to be bestest buds, but just make an effort. That's all we're asking. <laughs> And so we get the best mod birthday party ever because they give the most unconvincing cardboard cutout stand-in. That cardboard cutout is smiling. Oh no! Yeah, I'm surprised the I'm surprised the assembled ponies' heads didn't explode from the image of a mod smiling toothily. I mean that should that should cause such a dissonance that everyone would go all scanners. <laughs> Let's see here. I mean, all their heads be like, oh no. That's not good. Uh, but still, I, I... Wow, that is long. Uh, still, I do like this compromise because everybody in Ponyville wants a party because it's Pinkie Pie's sister and everybody's expecting that la grand party from Pinkie Pie. And yeah, everybody gets what they want. Pinkie Pie gets a surprise party. Mont gets a peaceful celebration with the pony she wants to hang out with. And yeah, everybody gets cake. Hurrah. Let them eat cake. Yes. And with that, episode ends. So let's head into final thoughts. Sidwar, what do you think of this episode? Well, at the time, I, I I had fun with it. I still do, but there was this override uncomfortableness as Pinky just seemed more aggressive, more uh, intolerant, more not the usual Pinky we know. And the truth is, the first half of season eight, this was just at the very start, so I didn't know the trend when I first watched this, but most of the main characters are not trying to achieve a goal or fix a problem. 
a lot of times in this season, they are the problem. And it's a very strange feeling, especially in a season where they're supposed to be the teachers conveying their best to their students. Uh, I was like, whoa, that actually feels out of place now. So this was the start of a trend that didn't, like, it's not ruining the show, but I'm hoping the latter half will show them trying to make things better for others. And, of course, encountering difficulties, including their own flaws. But don't just base it on this point who's behaving foolishly and leave it at that. And like I said, Mudbriar did, did not endear himself right away. It took a while. Also, although I should also note uh, my first viewing, BabsCon, their Wi-Fi uh, disconnected briefly. So the episode, I missed a chunk of it. Oh, wow. That's for craps. Oh. So yeah, a very a very confused viewing. <laughs> I, I guess Hasbro didn't send in an episode for you guys to watch then. Nope, just the live stream, mm. and it wasn't their fault anyway. It was just that the hotel the hotel Wi Fi requires you to log back in every now and again. Mm. Yeah, darn hotel Wi Fi. But anywho, um, as for me, I kind of like this episode. It's one of those things where Pinky's now getting what we don't really get from mod in a sense where everybody who imagine this um the first appearance of mod nobody really gets mod but the difference is since she is pinky's sister we kind of accepted it and i i don't know in the end probably they all had a great big hug it's been a while since i watched that episode and in this one pinky's getting that reaction again but she kind of learned the lesson of don't judge a book by its cover and whatnot. And as long as one person's happy, we should support them. Something like that. And don't crack his skull open. It's a metaphor, you you loon. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And yeah, it's one of those situations where this episode was a lot of fun. It had interesting comedic timing. And oh, wow, Mud Briar, he did not give his best at the very beginning. But he's okay. And I've been seeing some art of him um, as Sheldon from uh, Big Bang Theory. Have you seen that before? Yeah, that's that's been a common theme. I do not watch Big Bang Theory, so but to me, Mudbriar is just Mudbriar. Yeah, and to me, I'm the same thing too. My sister watched um, Big Bang Theory a lot, and I got no idea. Like, to me, BB uh, Big Bang Theory is a show about nerds and stuff, and they talk about nerd things, and eh, oh well. Uh, actually, I've, I've been, oh great, now I'm going to be like uh, Mudbriar. Technically, <laughs> I've watched a lot of talk conversation about it. It's not really about nerd culture, it's just throwing out nerd dialogue, and eh, it's not as positive a presentation <laughs> as others might think. Yeah, I, I thought so. Some people have talked about it, but you know what, that's a different topic altogether, but hey, um, I like this episode, and I would say give it a watch just for the introduction of Mod Boyfriend and whatnot. So, anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, next week we're going to dive into some magic, Legends of Magic. It's time to talk, tackle the first issue of this here series. Nice, and this first issue here is well, uh, Legends of Magic issue number one. <laughs> There's nothing to go beyond that. Uh, so join us for that one where we get to talk about the first issue and also um, Patreon sponsored by a Patreon supporter. Um, probably you guys know next week. And talking about the Patreons, um, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker, Cat, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys, for, well, quote-unquote, helping pay my medical bills. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me at many places. You can find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday, writing out a written review. You can find me on YouTube. Just look for Silver Quill or After the Fact. Uh, I'll be coming out with a What About Discord review very soon. <laughs> and uh, you can also find me on DeviantArt under MLP-Silver-Quill. Uh, I was in a hyphenated mood that day. <laughs> and steadily approaching, you can find me at BronyCon. Yay, on the 27th of July. Catch him there. Yes, indeed. 
and ask for autographs. You came with one or just come say hi. I'll be selling prints and buttons and, and all sorts of knickknacks and good stuff. So come on by, chat things up. It'll be a good time. Yes, and my strong bases by all his bases and toys. So anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vakril. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya. We are quite happy you joined us. Just listen to the joy in my voice. Yay. That was a joyful episode, and I wish I was not sick. <laughs> we'll get there.